Hello, everybody. Today in the studio, I have a world famous porn star, a fantasy football um, aficionado, and a very good friend of mine, Lisa Ann. Hello, Holly. It's Hello. so nice to be back in your studio for it your podcast. It's so nice to have you back. You are my second ever podcast. I remember your hustle was on. Hustle I remember was on. you were you were doing back to back interviews to build up some. I mm-hmm. ran into um, beautiful girl, blonde hair. Uh, helps you with social media sometimes. Bailey, Bailey, it was Bailey my first Rain. time meeting her. Yes. I met Bailey Rain while we were crossing ships in the night. I was leaving; she was coming in. And uh, since then, I hear constant talk about your podcast on social media. Oh, shit. I mentioned it yesterday on Christy Canyon's show, and uh, everyone I gotta loves have it. Her on. She's a great woman. Yeah, I got to have her on. She loves to, she's one of those people that, you know, worked with my mom, obviously. Yes. And it's always fun to have people on who worked with my mom and to hear the stories, you know, because my mom's long since retired. And she's so. also like, she's one of the women that made it through the business for a long period of time and really came out unscathed, right? Yeah. She's upbeat. She's easygoing. She's not tripping on anything. She's no drama. Yeah. And she's so great on the radio and she is so good at like phone sex talk, which like I could never do with a straight face. But the way that she will go from talking about the most mundane things to like, and now take your cock out and rub it slowly for me. And then I slowly lower my pussy. I'm like, whoa, girl. Girl. She's good at it. She she's really, so good she, at it. She's got range. And then she'll also all of a sudden, and by the way, we're here with Holly Randall and you can reach her at, like, yeah. she'll drop your yeah. name in your social media, like, out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or she'll be, like, reading, like, a magazine and she'll be like, and then, well, actually, maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't want to, like, make people think that she's not into her right. her little uh, sexy um, diatribes. But, but uh, she, she is, I'm sure. She's damn good. I yeah, met her my is. first time when I was 18 years old, and she was a feature dancer at Al's. Oh, wow. And back then, I looked at the porn stars on stage like, wow, these girls must have such amazing lives. Yeah. Like, they must be incredible. And then I came out to the valley, and I was like, this isn't really what I thought. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> this isn't really what I thought. <laughs> oh, man. So the last time you were here, um, you had retired. But now you've made a grand comeback. So tell me what led you to make that decision and how it's been for you coming back to the industry. Well, first and foremost, I'd like to thank you for holding my secret for longer than anyone else because you were the first person that knew for a year before I came back that I was quietly and cautiously trying to map out a comeback. Mm -hmm. And I was at one time you and I spent a lot of time, and I appreciate you for giving me that time talking about shooting some projects for another company. And then I was just afraid. And I realized if I could just hold tight and produce this myself, Mm -hmm. we know what we're dealing with if it's me. Mm -hmm. We don't know what we're dealing with if we get a lot of emails from someone else saying, hey, can you add this into your day? Hey, can you add this? (laughs) Hey, how about we have 20 extras and we get all their model releases? How about we go to Belly? And then you and I were like, let's just do this on our own. So taking that... You know, I think I needed them to get my head in the game and to accept, am I willing to do this? What might change in my life? What, you know, am I sacrificing anything? And then when you and I got together and shot that first three days in Malibu, Mm. I didn't even know what I was going to do with that first scene yet. Remember, I didn't have my deal yet with Evil for distribution. Mm -hmm. I wasn't quite sure if I was willing to come, come, come back. But I was like, let me shoot this scene and like see how I feel about it. And it just made such a difference being on set with you. Oh, I think you. our partnership and our work relationship, I just feel like we're this team that kind of comes on. We know what we need. Mm-hmm. We know what we expect. We get it done. We're willing to be like, that might work. That might not work. And it's a real collective. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Well, you definitely know what you want, but you also like give me free reign to do my job. You know what I mean? Like you acknowledge that I know what I know. And so you take like my suggestion. If if I'm like, I think we should shoot over here because of the light or this is going to be really difficult if we try it this way, et cetera, et cetera. Um, You're like, okay, great. Um, whereas some people like really try to force something that just isn't going to work. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. And they don't want to listen to me, you know, right. You know, I'm working with you because of the expertise that you bring to the table, right? Right. You know, I'm going to show up with wardrobe. You know, I'm not going to have a bunch of bruises and marks on my body. Like, you know, I'm going to handle my end, but really it's important for us all not to micromanage each other. Right. And I've seen that on set. I've seen office people come to set to like be on for this big project. 
project and I can just feel the pressure yeah. of the director and the cameraman and everyone on set because I'm like, they're making the impossible even more impossible. Yeah. So it's unnecessary. Yes. And you make the girls feel good. I might make them feel nervous. You notice when we shoot other girls and you're doing their pictures, I find it's best for me not to be in the room. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going to get a direct relationship with you. It's going to help you when you shoot them again for another company. Mm -hmm. You're going to know them, and they don't feel the pressure of, like, me. Yeah. I'm a scary person. I don't mean to be, (laughs) but I am. You can be intimidating, that's for sure. I've come to terms with this. I have finally accepted it. I'm working on it. Yeah. It's a work in progress. But you, I mean, you're also lovely and very, I don't know, I've only ever had really great experiences with you, personally. So, um, And I think that, you know, you uh, you have this nurturing kind of um you know character with with these girls you know a lot of these girls that we shoot with are are you know young mm-hmm. and i really love how you kind of sit them down and give them advice and <laughs> tell them they should sell their stuff on my sexy auctions <laughs> secret addiction which is not a secret to holly randall is my addiction to my sexy auctions and wanting every what i'm trying to do is, is create a lot of activities yes. so that when we have a shutdown we don't feel the desperation the people that should feel the desperation are the crew, the yeah. makeup artists, the people who don't have options to work other days as yeah. talent. You shouldn't even complain. You should shut up and feel bad for you who can't shoot that day, Holly, right. unless you're doing a solo. Right. And so by me trying to teach the girls about my sexy auction, feature dancing, some hosting, just one or two extra things in the rotation. Now you have something in every lane. Let's just say you get sore or you get sick and you don't want to shoot for a minute. You can do other things and make money. That's yeah. what I'm trying to teach them. Yeah, I mean, the internet has really enabled people to be able to do that, and there's so many different platforms now that girls can make money on, which has, you know, really created this sense of independence for the yeah. girls, which is great, which, I mean, you know, and I know, because we've been in this business a long time, that did not exist No, we shot magazine ago. layouts, and it was so disconnected that I used to have to stand at the newsstand and open every one to see when mine came out. Right. They didn't even tell us when they came out. Right. We didn't know six months, a year, whatever, you're going to get your name, not get your name. Now you can shoot your own magazine layout at home and post it on my sexy, um, on um, OnlyFans, <laughs> yeah, my sexy you, auction. You got that on the <laughs> um, and, you can, and you can have instant gratification. Yeah. You can be producing your own content. Like yeah. my goal is one hour a day to produce my own content, mm-hmm. which feeds the machine and also it forces me to have to put on makeup. Right. Because that's my biggest problem. When I'm not working, I just look like such, I just want to look like a scrub. I just don't want to have any makeup on. I want to be in sweats. Of course. And then I'm like, oh, it's already two o'clock. I don't want to put on makeup. So now it's like, get up in the morning, get your workout in, put makeup on, and then masturbate on the internet for strangers for a while. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds like a great Tuesday to me. Every morning. It's the first thing I do. No one knows this yet, but that's what I do in the morning. (laughs) That's amazing. So, so um we so recently we actually just finished uh two, two. movies for you. Which one are you what are, what is the movie coming out soon that you're the most excited about? So right now three scenes have already released from Lisa Ann's back for even more, which you can only imagine the even means anal. Yes. You know, code of word, course. right? Of course. Uh three scenes have already dropped. The fourth is dropping this Friday, and then this movie gets released. You and I just put together two movies. The one that's gonna come out first is Lisa Ann's Blackout Three. Oh yeah. This is the one <laughs> I get a lot of tweets about. And people don't think I'm listening. I'm listening. I hear you. There's a gangbang in there. A gangbang is in the books. We did it already. And Holly shot it. I did shoot it and it was the best day of my life. <laughs> 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 it was so funny because, like, okay, so I've only shot three gangbangs in my career. It's not really generally my thing. Um, and the only time I've ever shot gangbangs is when the model who's starring in it has booked me. Right. And I let, I don't mind shooting gangbangs in those scenarios because she produced it. She, she picked, picked the, talent, the talent. She talked to the talent to make sure they get along with each other. All the tough stuff is out of the way yeah, for you. And, and, and most importantly, she really wants to do it. Right. She's really right. in for it. You know what I mean? It's It means I'm shooting a girl who, first of all, has is an entrepreneur because she's producing it for herself. We all know gangbangs are not cheap because you nope. got to pay a lot of people. A lot of people. Um, and it's somebody who enjoys doing them. Otherwise, why would you book it right. for yourself? Because you're not actually getting paid yourself, right? right? That's what you got to like everyone gets paid but us, you right? Know, yeah. Exactly. So it's got to you got to be really into it. And in those cases, I enjoy shooting it because then I know everybody's on board. Um, it doesn't feel exploitative in any way. I never like to shoot scenes where I feel like the girl doesn't really want to do what she's doing. That I, makes I, me insane. 
insanely uncomfortable. I'm the same with firsts. So yeah. a lot of girls have been coming to me, asking me if I'll shoot their first anal scene. Yeah. And I'm like, nothing against you, but no. Yeah, I hate shooting because firsts Because I know how awkward my first 10 anal scenes were. Yeah. And I don't want to witness it. Yeah. Because I will be the person that's like, oh, let's not do it. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you go have a sandwich? Let's just go and do a boy girl scene. <laughs> you know, I can't, yeah. you know, and, and it's, there's so many things in your head as a girl when you're doing that for your first so many times. And you're worried about every element other than the scene. Yeah. You know, and, and so that pressure alone is a lot. And then if you see the girls cringing because she's in a little pain, yeah. that stresses you out a lot. Yeah. So, like, just not that into firsts. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, but it was funny because when you told me about it, I remember my two, like, male assistants, who we, we won't name their names because they, you know, like to remain you know, anonymous. Think, I would say they might run for president, right, so that's right. why we don't want to get them, you know. But um, they were both like, oh, man, so many dicks. Like, so bummed out. And I was like, yes, so many dicks! I was like, so excited. I'm like, finally, I'm like, normally surrounded by fucking women. And I'm like, yay, so, I mean, and you saw how excited I was that day. Great photos to prove it. She got in some great photos from the box cover end of the shoot. Amazing. And they were all like, really handsome men and like, some of my favorites, like Isaiah Maxwell. Everybody knows I love that man. I do too. And like, Rob Piper is my new favorite. Love He's so so sexy. That DP we shot with those two was oh, so good. I was that was the best day of my me. so good. And it's so funny too because our makeup artist Ozzy's also a woman, and we just perv on the guys all day. It's like total reverse. Um, She's kind of my in-house sex offender, the yeah. one that I concern the most that yeah. I might get a charge against my. She's company. like, she's, she's like, like, I'm all talk, but I did remember during the gangbang. I said, Ozzy, I have a responsibility for you. You must rub coconut oil <laughs> on the male performers before the box cover. Oh, she's jumping up and down. She did it, didn't she? She, <laughs> she loved she every did. minute of it. She's like, who's next? <laughs> so funny. <laughs> she's great. It was so funny. But it was a lot of fun. And, you know, it's it's a tricky thing to book. Yeah. It took me four months to book it. Yep. Because you got to find the right location. And you still had guys yep. drop out last drop minute. Drop out last had minute. Had to replace them with somebody yep. else. Yep. Um, yeah. I initially booked 10. Ended up cutting it down, you know, because cancellations, changes, tests, this I and that. I didn't realize you initially booked 10. I did because I knew at least four would fall out. Okay. That's the, the numbers of the game. Yeah. Right? You know what I yeah. mean? Like you're booking I mean, if a anyone party. knows numbers. Yeah, yeah. If you're looking for a party and you invite you. 20 of your friends, like 10 are showing up. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's an interesting thing. You got to worry about parking outside the location. You yep. got to worry about who's okay with that much semen in their house. You know, it could yeah. just be a semen issue. Maybe it's a location that's like, you know, two is my cap. Yeah. I'm good with the DP, Lisa, but, you know, six, seven guys semen, not so much. Yeah. It's a yeah. lot. I actually did a, I did a little, uh, uh, come cleaning dance afterwards. <laughs> so, you know, they all came on you. But of course, like, no, I wish someone had. BTS. <laughs> yeah. Rob Piper was there and he was laughing his ass off. So there's like still come on the floor and I'm the only person on set that will clean come up because like all my guys are like, I ain't touching that shit. And I'm fine with it because it really doesn't bother me. Like I, I'm just not phased by anything at this point. And so I put down a bunch of Lysol wipes, right? I and I have gloves in my container too. So you can put gloves on to pick yeah, up. Like yeah, exactly. And, um, and I put put my feet on the Lysol wipes and I did and I like did and because they're slippery right so I did this little dance like this little shuffle like like, yeah exactly like cleaning up the cum and Rob Piper walks in he looks at me like I'm doing the cum cleaning dance and I started doing like the running man and stuff (laughs) and he was like dying he was like oh my fucking god you're crazy and see that's the energy that I love being around you on set we have fun and I think that the people coming to our sets are having fun too yeah and that word gets out. You know what? When people go home, when you get in your car after you've shot a scene, you analyze how you did it. Just like an athlete after a game. Mm-hmm. And you know in your stomach when you had a great scene. Like when I left that DP that day, I was like high on a kite for like three days. I was like, that was an amazing DP. Yeah. Because for me, it's a challenge to do it. Oh, absolutely. You know, Those it, guys' dicks are huge. huge. It's a lot of dick going in my tiny body. You know yeah. what I mean? And also it's the preparation. It's everything. And so as you're replaying it, then I stop and think, these guys are having the same thought in their mind and they enjoy being around us. Mm-hmm. And everyone needs that. Yeah. You know, because there's some days you just don't like the people you work with quite as much. Yes. Maybe they're the way they speak to you. Maybe they, they don't play music. Whatever it might be, big yeah. or small. It's nice to know that people are leaving with a smile on their face. Yeah, I think it's really important to have like good vibes on set. And I mean, you know, like I like I always say, you spend most of your life at work. If you yeah. hate your job, you spend most of your life 
hating like what your you're doing, your existence. Exactly. It's your existence. And I really just try to have, and you know, it's really important for me to have people with good vibes on set. That's really important to me. That's why I work with the same crew all the time. Yep. And, you know, I just like want to have a good time. And look, let's face it, like our job is a little ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. It's kind of silly. So like, let's like, Let's have fun with it. I sit in traffic on my way to set looking around at everybody. And I yeah. always think, bet none of them are going to go get gang banged right now. <laughs> nope, they're going to their same office with the shit they didn't finish yesterday. And they got to go by the water cooler to talk to their friend. And they packed a lunch and hopefully they remembered it. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm sitting on the same freeway as them and I'm going to my gang bang. Yep, <laughs> yep. That's what I, I mean, the whole thing is silly, yeah. light, yeah. free. There's so yeah. much freedom in what we do. Yes. That You know, it's funny. That's the one thing that my mom always talked about when people would ask her, like, why do you do what you do as opposed to, like, shooting fashion or editorial or whatever. She's like, there's so much freedom in shooting nudes, you know? And that's why it would initially, that's what initially attracted her to it because she could shoot nudes and then she could sell it, yeah. you know? And you could sell it without actually having been commissioned to shoot something specific like you have to do for fashion right. or editorial. Right. Like, you could just kind of free market, like, sell nudes wherever because people are always looking looking to buy it. It's a right. little different these days because right. people have like um you know, and actually different clients are different. Like like Twisties is very specific. They send me a script, they want a very specific thing. Naughty America is a little bit more loose. They want a specific scenario, like right. an office scenario or, or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah, Naughty Teacher. But I'm free to do the scripts. I'm free to pick it, you know, whatever I want to do. And Naughty America usually has ad lib dialogue instead of real structured, you have to say this. Yeah, well, they allow, I don't know how it is for other directors, but they allow me to like kind of do whatever I want. Great. Like they're like, give me an office scene, Great. like run talent by me and then like I can come up with a scenario. Great. So that's easy. Yeah. So it's a little different these days, but there still is a lot of freedom in freedom. in what we do. It's so much fun. Yeah. And I especially mean, when you're producing for yourself like you are. 100%. You know, that brings me to the three scenes that I just shot for Brazzers. Mm. And I love the campaign. I was thrilled that I was able to have you shoot the photos. So you all know that beautiful queen video, all the photos you haven't seen yet. And the ones you have, those were all shot by Holly. Another super fun day together. That was great. But I will say this, when I showed up for those shoots, first thoughts are, okay, I don't have to have paperwork. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to bring all the supplies. I'm not going to be doing laundry. I don't have to wash everybody's cum towels today. This is exciting. <laughs> like, I'm not mine. But it felt very arbitrary. Mm. I was like, oh, this is weird. Like, I'm, I'm talent. Yeah. I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Just waiting for somebody to tell me what to do. And yeah. it just did not feel like it had as much purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to go home tired and be like, oh, I can't wait to sort photos or let me look yeah. at the video or let me watch some of this BTS. That whole thing fuels me. Yeah. It completes the process be because for me. Because it's a project from start to finish that you have complete control over. Yeah. It, from booking the talent and, and starting all of that to picking the photos and like approving the final edit. And it's, and it's all your vision and it's all yours. And there's something special about that. And also there's a fear factor when you didn't pick the photographer. Yeah. You're like, oh, there might be horrible photos of me. Whereas like when I know you're shooting me, you won't let it happen. You'll remind me, stand up straight, point your toes, watch your hand. You'll remind me of these things. And when no one's communicating with me, sometimes in my mind, I go to this place where I'm like, I bet you some of these are bad photos as I'm taking the photos because I'm getting no direction. Oh my God, girl, you don't even know. Like that, I actually had that experience on a slightly different level for my sister's wedding this weekend because they hired a wedding photographer. Okay. And the whole time I was like, she's coming real close to me with that fisheye lens, yeah. that wide angle lens. I'm like, what's going on? She's going to make my face look huge. I'm like, why isn't she using a fill flash here? Like, I just couldn't. Uh, and I actually did. I couldn't help but give her direction at one point. Like, I was I trying to understand. flag her from the sun, and she was using one camera with a super wide lens. And she was like, oh, your hand's in the shot. I'm like, why don't you try using your other camera with the longer lens? Step back, use your zoom. She was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, why am I telling you this? Because you want to be sure you don't look bad in a photo. I know, but what, like, meaning, like, why do I, I mean, I know why I had to tell her this, um, because it's not like they actually paid for, like, a really great photographer. But And also, so there's, there's also worried. the difference, too, of, like, okay, when I shoot for browsers, this is great. I'm going to get paid. Yeah. Right now, I'm paying yeah. everybody else. Right. But 
when I shoot for browsers, only I'm getting paid. And that kind of got me. Mm. When I produce my own projects, I am employing everyone from you Mm -hmm. to makeup, to the guy who I work on my box art with, Mm -hmm. to the editors. And I just feel like I'm fulfilling more. I feel like this is so cool. I now have this team and we're all working on this project together and everybody's making a little bit of money and we're all staying busy in a very positive and, and cool way. And that felt very different too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is weird. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It's definitely it, that. And that's honestly why, like, I still hold on to my website, hollyrandall.com, so fucking hard because, I mean, I'll be honest, like, it's really not making that much money. I'm hoping to change that. I've made some, some back, um, backyard, uh, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? Behind the scenes, back page. Yeah. 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 Coding something. Yeah. Whatever. Right. I'm making some changes. Um, that I'm hoping will change things. But, you know, it's still like, it's just like I'm not, I can't pull the kind of traffic that like, you know, one of my main clients, Twisties, can. Right. Um, but I still like hold on to that because I'm like, I just want somewhere where I have my own outlet that I can like produce my own stuff. Res- we need to get together working for other people. And I need time. to teach you how to utilize the Pornhub Premium Pornhub Amateur to drive traffic to the site. It's really helping my site. I actually do have the porn. I have the Pornhub Premium going and that's been super helpful. And my affiliate manager is now literally just building my Pornhub channel Good. at the moment. So I do, there are some things that still need to be done that I'm hoping will change right. things. But I have been holding desperately onto that site for it's years. Yours. I completely know and what you're talking about. And it's never really made that much right. money, but I just need something that's mine. I understand that completely. Yeah. And you get to be so creative and you have such a arsenal of scenes mm-hmm. and, and shoots that you've already done. Where would they all go? Ten years you know of what content. I mean? And, and beautiful content too. Yeah. Really unique, you know, beautiful, enjoyable content. And yeah. that's not something Thank you're you. seeing on everybody else's sites. Uh, yeah, and uh, some older stuff of you, yes. which, which which we love. I was just a youngin. Yeah, just a youngin. Yeah, man, your family and and my shooting career and being able to work with a woman, mm. you know, just like working with your mom, that's a big deal mm. for us. Yeah. I mean, there were a lot of creepy photographers when I first got into the business, and yeah. I was very lucky to not have to interact with a lot of people. I got a contract right away, right? So I'd only be shooting my movies with one company because I was kind of afraid, mm. and that was smart. Mm -hmm. That introduced me to the business with kind of like a family around me of people like that so-and-so, that so-and-so. And And then keeping women on set. I think it's great for everybody. All women feel more comfortable. We and, And it's a little bit more... Even the men feel more comfortable. I can see guys that have struggled with other male directors who I work with and it's always successful. And I say to the directors, for a guy to fail in front of a guy... My rule of thumb is you never put him in front of that guy again. Because mm. a director can become bad chi for a male performer. Yeah. And male performers have told me, like, I tried to go back the second time, and each time I work for him, I'm just, I'm like, it's because in your mind, you remember you failed. Mm-hmm. It's like going to a specific arena where LeBron always has a bad game. No right. matter what that's in his head now, he's always going to have a bad game there. Right. Same thing with the director and the male talent relationship. And I just think your energy and Ozzy's energy, the guys are just really comfortable, and we're getting good scenes out of all of them. Yeah. And also too, like, you know, I flirt with the guys a little bit and I think, I mean, I I am a flirtatious person by nature, but I also too, like, I want them to feel good and I want them to feel valued and I want them to feel like, like, yeah, you know, like I'm just as important of the girl. Yeah, exactly. I've been on sets where they put the guy in a room and nobody literally talks to him until right before they need him. And I'm like, don't do that to the guy. Yeah. I really like (laughs) want to build his confidence up and make him feel sexy and make, almost make him feel like the sex object. You know what I mean? That's why I think it's great when it's you and me and Ozzy and we're like, there and we're like, oh, you're so sexy. You know, and then I there's mean, me texting them all the night before, flirting with them yeah, by text, yeah. and all the stuff that I do on the side to keep my guys real engaged. Right. I mean, to be fair, some of them read it wrong. Yeah. And then think like I actually want to fuck them. Right. And I, I don't. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just like it's not that I don't find you attractive, but I'm in a monogamous relationship yes. and I really love my boyfriend and, and I, I just I don't. watched you do a gangbang. Yeah, I you just it's I mean? not my thing. It's not my thing. I actually I'm more into guys that don't want to be the center of attention. Like I understand I'm that. 
I need to be the star in the relationship. So just by nature, I tend to not date guys who are like actors or musicians right. or anything that like completely. that. That's just like, it's just not my type. Yeah. You I like, like to the, fly below the radar in our personal lives. Yeah. I'm like, honestly, I'm like my, like my mom and dad's relationship. Like I'm attracted to men that are like my father that are kind of quiet, very intelligent, mm-hmm. well-educated, well-read, but not like big on being like the star. Of the, I would be the same way yeah. if I were to get into a relationship and get married again one day. Something I'm not opposed to doing, but for some reason it just doesn't seem like my life is leading that way at this current moment. Mm-hmm. I'm not out searching, but that would be the type of guy that I would need to. But do you think that it uh, makes it more difficult to date because you are a celebrity? It's kind of and impossible. Yeah. I mean, you can't exactly... I mean, I met my boyfriend on Tinder. I you know, most people... Exactly. I, you can't... I mean, most people don't know what I look like. And look, I'm not that famous. Most people outside of the adult arena have no idea who I am, which is fine. But people know who you are. Yeah. And yeah, I can't go on... I mean, I can go on Tinder and people are like, I'm just some normal chick, but you can't. So... I mean, where, how, and where do you even meet guys? I meet people through people. That's yeah. normally my thing. So if I'm going to meet somebody new, he has to know somebody that's in my complete inner circle. Right. Um, I like. I said to you on set a couple of weeks ago, I think I might date a little bit in 2019 and mainly for podcast content because <laughs> I know that most of them are not going to go well. Right. And I'm going to end up being with the same guys that I've been having sex with and hanging out with for 20 years. Right. Um, but people are strange. Mm. You know, what I find is it's pretty quick. To know if the guy's asking me too many questions about other girls in the business, I'm like, oh, he has, he knows way too much. Yeah. You know, when he's yeah. asking me, like, do you hang out with this girl? Do you? And then if they don't want to know anything about it, that's also a gray area too. It's, it's really, mm. it's very tricky. And, you know, I've gone on first dates with guys and not had sex and then have gotten a trail of nasty emails when I wake up in the morning about how I've had sex with everyone and they're appalled that I wouldn't have sex with them. I also had sex sex with a guy who the condom broke. This was like three, four years ago. The condom broke during sex and he got up and freaked out and was insistent that he probably caught an STD from me and like caused this whole scene. And we were like alone and he's screaming at me and it took him three days to get his test results. And he like harassed me for the whole three days. And I was like, buddy, listen, you obviously weren't comfortable with this. Yeah. So that one minor instance of the condom breaking really pushed you over the edge, which I understand. I went and got tested right away. Within 24 hours, was be able to send him my test. Mm-hmm. But it was like, that kind of showed me what's out there. Mm-hmm. And I have to really watch that fine line. And that's why I have sex with a lot of athletes because... They're not going to flip out. They're not going to stalk me. They're not going to be overly aggressive. They don't want a relationship. Yeah. I don't ask them about their stuff. They don't ask me. And normally, they're the first ones to wear a condom. Mm. Believe it or not, the smart athletes, like I don't have to debate it with them. Yeah. A lot of civilians still want to debate the condom thing. And I always say this to guys, like, if you're even considering not wearing a condom with me, then I don't want to have sex with you without a condom or with a condom because that's gross. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying I'm dirty, yeah. but like you've seen I've done gangbangs and I've been having sex with thousands of people my whole life. Right. Like, you're a risk taker. I'm not that much of a risk taker. Yeah. So, so like, if you don't want to wear one with me, you got a problem. That's interesting that you would say that because so many people, I think they look at porn stars and they, and, you know, people who don't realize the rigorous testing that they do and, and how a lot of them are responsible with having sex outside of, you know, their day to day on sex bareback sets where both people right. have been tested. They just think that like they're reckless and they just have sex with everybody. And so they must have all of these STDs. And it's like, right. it's, so it's so not different. the case. And when I'm shooting, um, in my personal life, because I don't have a relationship, I don't have unprotected sex. Right. Um, there's a couple guys that will go and get a test. Mm-hmm. So if we're going to go away for a weekend together, we can have unprotected sex. Right. And they'll go and get tested. I'll go and get texted. That's like, so I have this whole thing. But my thing is, when I'm shooting, I'm afraid to bring risk to the people in my personal life. Right. Who knows if I picked something up on set in between my testing period. Or picking them up from, from outside yes. set and then bringing it to right. set because it goes both ways. You have to be really guarded with that. But yeah. So the dating thing, it's like, 
And also, my life consists of so much communication. Mm -hmm. Like, do you fucking know how much I communicate? I was just thinking about this yesterday. Between doing radio, being in the business, doing interviews, the constant banter on any platform. I can go on any of my DMs right now, and there's 100 messages waiting for me. I have a massive amount of email accounts. There's tons of emails in there. This constant communication, it really makes me want to be silent in my free time. Mm. And I think that's one of the reasons I don't date more. And I don't get out and meet new people. Yeah. I just want to be quiet. It makes sense. (laughs) When I have time off, I'm like, I don't want to go anywhere or do anything. I I was talking to Brett Rossi about that. I just had her on. She said the same thing. I want to do nothing. Yeah. I just want to stare at the TV or listen to something on the radio. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, You know, it's funny the way, one of the things that I was laughing about when we shot the gangbang was, you know, how people, like, I don't know, as I was shooting this gangbang, which I don't shoot very often, I was thinking about the misconceptions people have about the adult industry and like the reality of it. And as I was listening to the guys during the actual sex and they're saying all kinds of things like, yeah, take it, take it, I take love it how in they the get aggressive and Yeah, they're super so aggressive. When they're not on it. And then we cut and then they're like, hey, can I have a baby boy? Pay you doing all right, man? Yeah, yeah. Like, and it's like complete change, you know? And if you talk to these guys person to person, you know, before and after the gangbang, like I remember you guys were all talking fantasy football before it started and you were like schooling them all. It was so great. <laughs> well, they wouldn't let me in their league, by the way. You don't know the backstory. Oh. I wanted to be in this league and they're like, no, you know too much. And I'm like, that's just bullshit that you guys are afraid of a girl. They're like, don't, we don't count you as a girl. You know too much, you can't be in our league. Yeah. So I wasn't allowed in. <laughs> that's so funny. But just like they're so nice and polite and respectful. So it's really, you really see the acting come into play. And then, you know, also too, like, I, you know, because I know you so well, I could see it in your eyes because you're looking for like people who've left the scenario. I just walked out of the set while I'm having, yeah, I'm, I'm filled. I got my DP going on in one hand cock in my hand, but I know there could be one in my mouth and one in my other hand. I'm just reaching around. Where's the extra yeah, cock? Yeah, the extra cocks? I can just see your eyes and you're like, where's the, my fucking six cock? You're like, I paid for six cocks. I am paying. Where's six number cocks? six? Where Why are, are you I? in the fucking corner? Get over here. And I'm, I'm not going to scold someone while we're doing this scene while I'm getting fucked about. I know you weren't in this scene. I can see over there. No, I was just in. No, you weren't. You've been sitting over there. I can see out of the corner of my eye like these debates. Yeah, and you're like, get your dick in here. Yes. You're like, even if you can't get it hard, just say in the fucking background. I need yeah, your body. Just block it. Okay, just block it and jerk off. So funny. You know, when I when I think about that, that moment of yeah. people understanding how different we are as humans and how different we are once the camera's on us, once we're in that moment, mm-hmm. I look at it like athletes yeah. and how we get into our game mode. And like that DP is a great example. I really feel like we're, we're working, we're performing the sexual Olympics. I know the guys are communicating with each other mm-hmm. so that they can get the best angle for you. Mm-hmm. I'm in there working my body so I can take both of these cocks and open up for the camera. Everyone's thinking, yet there's still passion. And there's still a connection going on that's making this scene just awesome. And that is fascinating yeah. because there's a lot of levels that good performers deal with. Isaiah and Rob are both great performers. Mm-hmm. And they know what's important. And they don't it, – it's just – it's really – a dance. And that's what your mom used to say all the time. She used to say, it's a dance. If it's done right, it's a dance. It is. And it is. It is a dance from the stripping down to the climbing on the guy to the oral to everything that you do right. And the great male performers, they're on point with things like if my hair drops down in front of something and is blocking, they'll softly pick it back up. Mm-hmm. There's things that's always going on that people don't realize when they're watching the scene. We're selling that passionate moment. Yeah. But these are businessmen in yeah. there getting a job done and yeah. making sure that the job gets done while we're still having sex. It's fascinating. All the little minutiae that goes into like a great scene is just like, and the, the unspoken communication between performers is really an amazing thing to witness if you know how to look for it. Yeah. It is kind of like a sports game, you know, like I try to watch a uh, hockey with my boyfriend and he'll be like, well, and he'll try to point out to me how, you know, when this guy's going to pass to this yep. guy, because, and I'm like, I don't see it. Like, I don't understand how he knows where the puck's going to go. But when I'm watching a sex scene, I can Same. see it. Like, yep. I know, like, who's going to go in next. Yep. And you know what I mean? It's how like, it's, moving it around. And it's the, the same kind of the thing. guys are even better than the girls about silently communicating with each yes. other. They don't, you don't have to stop and cut. Yeah. A girl will make the mistake and talk and be like, oh, should I move over here? Yeah. These guys will just pick up my body and next thing you know, I am over there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, whoa, how'd that just happen? Yeah, and, the, and it's amazing too and they're looking at me and they're watching like the camera and they're looking at the light 
fights and so, yeah. you know what I mean? Because I mean, shooting a game bang is hectic because you know you the it's like I never really know exactly what angle I need to be at for a DP because the minute those two bodies come in, um, I they can block me if I'm at a certain angle, so it's almost impossible for me to predict. So I really got to be ready to move, and we right. got to be ready to move the lights yep. too. Yep. So it's just like it's it's just like it's it's kind of chaotic. So behind the scenes, you see me like yelling at all my guys. I'm like, get the fuck out of here, move it. You know, and I'm moving and my lights, and I'm by like not distracting us because yeah. I know you're moving out of the corner of my eye. But we never, you never make enough noise that everyone stops and looks at you. Yeah, and that's not. powerful on your end because a lot of people that I've shot for it, it causes a break in the energy, and we all stop and look up. Like, yeah. do you need us for something? Because yeah. it sounds like there's a lot of chaos going off over there, right? And it messes up the flow. Yeah, and you don't do that. And another thing, so you all know, when you watch this gangbang, understand that the lighting. Not only does Holly know everything about lighting, but she picked a specific location that had a room where we would also get a lot of natural light to fill the space, and what a difference that made. Yep. Huge difference. Yeah, well, especially when you're dealing with a gangbang with so many bodies that are going to be blocking you. Yeah. And also, too, they all have dark skin. Yeah. So that's, I mean, lighting-wise, it's something I got to think about, right? right? So I got to, like, add more light in in certain places so we can make sure we see everything. I mean, thank God you have a darker tone skin, too. Right. Because if you were super pale, the contrast between the skin can be a real nightmare. And that's something else, like, people don't think about. Like, that is literally a serious lighting challenge for me. Um, By the way. I'm just, I tan more when I'm shooting interracial scenes than when I'm not. so Because helpful. I don't want to pair up. Like when I used to shoot a lot of so scenes helpful. with Eric Everhard and I was going through my yeah. tanning phase where I was tanning too much, he would start texting me two weeks beforehand like, please don't tan for the next two weeks. Yeah, because he's so Cause pale. Because he's so pale yep. and he can't hold an ounce of color. Nope. And so I would stop tanning for him. Yeah. But with the interracial scenes, I know what it does for you. So I will kick up my tanning. Like I might go once a week normally, but I'll go three times the week before that, that gangbang. Yeah. Just so it's a little bit more balanced and a little bit less harsh for you. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely helpful because I'm trying to you know, like make sure that we see detail in everybody's skin. But I also love the connection that I have with the talent. You know, when you talk about even John John, I hadn't seen him in years when I got to see him for the gangbang, and he's working a regular job now and is just doing this on the side. So there was a moment that you don't know about. We were in the bathroom getting ready together, and it was about 15 minutes, and he's shaving, and I'm doing some stuff, and it was like a boyfriend girl friend moment mm. where you're in the bathroom in the morning getting ready yeah. and then we both brushed our teeth and the whole time he was telling me about his new job and we were talking and I said to him you know we've known each other over 10 years and he said wow it's amazing and I just realized like that was such a special moment yeah, because it was just so casual but we really got to catch up and it really filled me where I'm like oh I know where he's at now in life and this makes me super happy and it's like the connections I have with my co-stars it will never be replaced in any other workplace. I think it's, yeah, it's interesting because it's like, yes, it's just work, but it still is sex, which is still a very intimate practice. Yeah. And so I feel that that co-stars, that you guys do have a different kind of connection than like mainstream actors 100%. would have with other mainstream actors because it is work. But it is like an intimate kind of work. So it's, it's different. And also they get to know you. You get to know them. You find out what they like. I know what perfumes certain guys like. I know where guys like to be touched that will get them. Like I know with Rob, all I need to do is kiss him. Mm. And if I'm intimate with him kissing, he's hard as a rock. And that's so beautiful. It's so interesting how many guys, um, if like they're struggling or they need to get their edge. So For those of you who don't know, when a guy needs to get hard, we call it getting your edge. It just sounds a little bit nicer than being like, get your dick hard. Right, right. I'm going to give you some time to get your edge. Let us know when you have wood. That was the big expression. Everyone would leave the room before Viagra and all the other uh, Mm. additives. The, everyone would leave the room and they'd leave the female and male talent in there to get the wood going. Right. And they'd be like, yell, yell when you have wood. And then we'd just scream, we got wood. And they'd all come in the room. Running in. <laughs> yes. Hurry up before he loses it. Uh, that's flashback to adult film school. Uh, um, but uh, yeah, so I it totally is, forgot it is where more I was intimate. You, you were surprised how many of the guys kissing. Right, that's and what connection. it was. Thank you. Yes, I think that's missing from the younger talent because they've been spoiled with Viagra and the other mm-hmm. things that talent use. They don't realize it's still very important to be face to face and to mm-hmm. hear each other breathe and mm-hmm. to say nice things in each other's ears mm-hmm. and to do little things yeah. on or off camera yeah. that create this intensity where you are like teammates. Get 
getting matched up and you can't wait to get matched up again and win. And that's what a good scene is. It's a win. I love it. I love how you like always allude to bring everything back to sports. Everything. It's so great. Everything. <laughs> everything. Even when there's like a good fight going on between people I know and I've got to resolve it. I'll always bring an old beef of athletes and I'll be like, okay, so you, just so you know, there was this time with Shaq and, you know, it's just like, and then, and then we straight it all out. Now you're still doing your fantasy football with Sirius, right? I am. So during football season, I work all day Fridays. So I get off set Thursdays and I know I got to be up at 5 a.m. Friday and I have to have all the information. So normally Thursdays, I kind of stay up all night, mm-hmm. write down all the injury reports, get everything ready for my next day. And then I'm at my computer all day patching in with different channels. Channels all over the U.S. giving sports picks, Mm -hmm. fantasy football picks. And then on Sunday and Monday nights, I cover fantasy football, basketball, and baseball for Sirius XM. And I love my my co-hosts. My producers find it so entertaining to read the comments that I get on my Instagram and the messages, you know, people call in and try to talk to me that aren't Mm -hmm. talking sports. So I'm breaking like, so we just had this heavy breather and it was hysterical. Luckily, everyone is very entertained by everything and no one's offended. So I'm lucky. So they were obviously okay with you going back and shooting porn again. Yes. And the funny thing was I sat down with my boss and talked to him about it in person Mm -hmm. and it didn't really gravitate with him. So then when it happened, he reached out, he goes, did you tell me that? And I was like, I did. Do you remember this exact conversation? He's like, oh yeah, that's right. And he's... It's only going to help my notoriety with the channel. It only helps my followers. It only helps push things. But they have gotten to know me so well that I hear them. It was funny. There was a story this year about Jimmy Garoppolo going out with a porn star, Kira Mia. Mm. And the news got crazy about it. Like, what is he doing with a porn star? And I listen to my channel and to other channels on Sirius all the time. Mm-hmm. And what I heard from my host was... Are you judging her as a person because of what she does? Who cares if they went on a date? She's no different than any other woman. That's his choice. And I realize that I have been able to change some of the mindset of people. Mm-hmm. I've opened their minds. I think a lot of people are less judgmental because they've gotten to know me. Mm-hmm. And they're like, well, if she's like that. There's probably other girls in the business that are just cool and like that. And yeah. there are. Yeah. There are a ton of amazing women that I'm hoping that people will see differently and meet differently because of what I'm doing. Yeah, that's really great. You know, it's a, it's funny. Every time I talk to somebody who had nothing to do with the porn industry and then ended up coming into the porn industry, whether or not it was to interview people for a research project or work in some like kind of outside capacity or something, they're always surprised by like how down to earth, cool and quote unquote normal porn stars are. I'm like, what did you expect? From yeah, these they ex- they expect boogie nights. I think. I think yeah. they expect in their mind. We're we're really opening up. This younger generation is the most sexually fluid yet. They're the mm-hmm. least judgmental. They That's don't true. look at porn stars as as different than any other people. They're grateful. They might like us more than movie stars at, at this point. This mm-hmm. new generation. We're like and, the underdogs. Yeah, we're well, the underdogs. They're yeah. rooting for us, but. That's important. And each time we evolve and we grow, people are realizing like, that's all in your head. All of that is in your head. There's Mm -hmm. never been a set in real life that's been like, you think it is. Yeah. There's girls are not inviting dudes over all day long to have sex with them. No. Most of these girls are doing totally opposite things than you think. They're working. They're cl- they're editing clips for sale. Yeah. They're doing something. It's, it's funny because even when I see a girl put on Twitter like, oh, my God, I'm so horny. I've been masturbating all day. I might just – the plumbers come over. Like, I might just fuck them because I'm so horny. I'm like, girl, you are lying through your teeth. <laughs> I know you are. You, you are just the saying that. If he even looked at you wrong, yeah. I know you would. Like, <laughs> he'll be dead in your unit, okay? Like, you are not – I know. I see it too. I'm like, I'm going to like that post just because I know it's not true. And by the way, the plumber is not going to be attractive. They never are. Actually, no. This happened to you. Yes. Remember I told you I had these pl- these plumbers come over and it was these two uh, twins. They were fucking identical oh, twins. Oh, I want these twins so two, bad. Two super hot black guys that were twins and they came over and I was like... Is this a porn scene? I'm like, they were so good looking. I, I was like, hire this them. Did you look is... for wedding rings? Were either of them married? I didn't look. Oh, I wish I would have asked you this to do uh, this for me. Uh, I, I, I think this... they only serve the West Side. Otherwise, I I'd send will them over just to you. rent an Airbnb <laughs> on the West Side, and I will claim a plumbing issue. I mean, this is not difficult in today's world. I can figure this out. It was so weird. I just remember <laughs> thinking to myself, I'm like, this is a fucking porn scene. Yeah, meanwhile, like, what the is guy, going on here? My guy comes over, and he's like, 75 year old Russian guy that I 
I can barely understand. I'm like, I know he's going to do a good job. I just can't understand a word he's saying right now, but okay. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really ironic. You know, there's one thing I wanted to talk about, and it's my body. Mm. Um, there's so many things that people don't know, but since the Brazzer scene has come out, I've noticed a lot more negative commentary than I expected. So, mm. you know, a lot of guys are very upset that I don't have large, large boobs anymore. A lot of people are very upset that I've lost weight. Um, and so, you know, I'm smarter now. I just hit mute people. I'm not blocking you because I still would love your number. Like I like the follower count, yeah. but we won't engage anymore. Right. Luckily for those of you who don't like how I look now, you have all of the years of content in the past where I look like that, and you can live in that place, and I'm fine with that. But what most people don't know is the year I was planning on retiring, I found a lump in my breast, and I had to have a biopsy done, and I had to have that lump removed. And luckily, when I had the biopsy done, it was benign. But you know, when you have implants and you have a biopsy done, this is how it goes down. They want you to watch in this screen of larger than life, your television, of a needle going into your breast because you're supposed to be responsible if it punctures your implant. Jesus. So I'm there alone. I'm sweating like a whore in church. I'm, I'm, I'm alone. So what right. am I going to do during this? I'm going to call my least favorite ex-boyfriend who I refer to as Satan. Mm -hmm. He's an awful person, but for some reason I find him entertaining. And there's very few people I've had intimate relationships with that I don't still have some sort of a friendship with. Mm -hmm. It's a weird thing with me. Mm -hmm. So I was like, there's no one that can make me feel better and worse at the same time. I'm calling him because it's just the right thing to do. So I called him and I'm like, you're like my least favorite boyfriend I ever had. I need you to walk me through this situation. And so I remember taking a picture of it and sending it to him. He's like, I cannot believe you're sitting watching this. So as I was watching this, then you have to wait a week or so till you get your results. And at that time, I went to my doctor and I said, I want to do everything that I can to not live in the risk factor of the fear of so many people in my family having breast cancer and right. cancer. Um and so what we did was we took my diet down to a paleo diet. Mm -hmm. That was my first big change that started this weight loss. And then we decided that when we removed the lump from my breast, I was going to go a lot smaller to eliminate the risk of the masses because the more tissue you have, the more risk. I mean, there was a point where I was thinking a mastectomy. Like mm. your mind goes to a lot of places and the yeah. internet can be a horrible place when you're alone and waiting for test results. Yeah, And know, all of this was happening... While I was on the road, knowing that I was finishing this tour, and that December 23rd, right after I retired, I'd be getting this lump removed, and I would also be getting my boobs redone. So during this time frame, I was really obsessed with how can I live to my optimal health? Mm -hmm. What can I do to be less concerned? And that's when I learned about sugar. And I was like, okay, learning that sugar is like throwing you know, gasoline on a fire. Mm -hmm. I realized I wanted to eliminate sugar. So over the first three years, I just started to drop weight. And it was never me getting on a scale. As a matter of fact, I owned a scale. It was a digital. The battery died. And I was like, you know what? I'd rather throw it out. Mm -hmm. I can get on a scale somewhere else. Like, I'm not a scale person. I know when I put on a pair of jeans, yeah. whether I put on weight or not. Right, right. What's the point? Yeah. And as a woman, when you do get on a scale, which I used to years ago, your weight fluctuates so much so that you're going to hate yourself three days a week. Yeah. And it could just be from your period. It could be water weight. It could be the time of day you eat before you went to bed. But no way, Jose. So I got rid of the scale. So for most people that don't understand, this overall change of my body— the catalyst was finding a lump. And wow. during that time, I was so afraid and I was so concerned. And when I was retiring, part of me thought, if I have to go sm smaller, no one's going to want to see me anymore. Like there were so many things in my head that nobody knew I was battling with. Mm. When my retirement happened, it was more like, just let me get this thing out of my breast and let me see how I survive here. Right. And so there were a lot of things. So when people now are, are coming at me with their lack of satisfa satisfaction of how I look right now, it doesn't affect me. But I want you to understand when you voice your opinion towards someone's looks, you don't always know the true meaning behind what has taken place. Yeah. And so if you want to do it to me, I'm fine with it because I'm older and it's not going to get into me. But for these younger girls or for anyone else out there, I want you to think about something you're saying that could affect them in a way. And maybe you don't have all of the information on why there was such a drastic change. Yeah. I mean, everybody's fighting some great battle. Yeah. And you don't know what people 
people are going through. And that's something that I definitely try to keep in mind because I find myself leaning towards judgment sometimes when I look at other people, you know, and other people's bodies. But I realize a lot of that just comes from me and my own insecurity about my own body. I'm projecting my insecurities onto somebody else. What we all do it. You know? There's nothing worse than editing your own photos. Yeah. Like I look at photos like, and I'm just like, sometimes I literally am like, okay, you need to go to the gym right now. Like I'm as obsessive as the next person, but I didn't obsess over this change to the point of my looks. I obsessed over it for optimal health because I didn't want to go through that emotional roller coaster again of getting test results and getting things back. And you know, they're not always the best bedside manner when you're going to get treatments done at the hospital because they're busy, you know, and you're mortified. And you know, so these things that affect us, we don't always share, but I wanted to share that with you and let everyone know that was something that I dealt with. And now that I know more about it. I'm doing everything I can to not put my body at risk for bad things. Well, I think you look amazing. I think your new boobs look great. Thank you. I think they honestly look like... I was actually thinking about that the other day when I was filming you. I was like, God, her boobs look really good now. Thank you. Um, So, I mean, I don't... You know, there's always people that are gonna fucking complain about... That's the thing about the internet. It's a soapbox for all kinds of people to voice their opinions and most of it is just fucking nonsense anyways. And, And also, I think we have a very unrealistic almost like an avatar image right now of what girls are supposed to look like. Right. It's becoming so curvy and I feel like I'm always missing the curve, literally. Yeah. You know, like when I was young, big butts weren't in and I had one. Yeah. And it was a bummer. Yeah. And now, you know, now big butts are in. I don't have one. Oh, yeah. Like I said, I'm always on the opposite of the curve. But so I think we're just, our expectations, like everyone's body just looks different at different times of their life. It does different things. As a woman, you don't always have control control over it. Yeah. You just got to eat right and live right. Absolutely. Whatever happens, happens. Absolutely. Well, I think you look fucking amazing. Thank you. And I think you are amazing. Thank you. And thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. It's always so good to see you. Thank you for being such a big part of my life again. And I'm, I mean, oh. it really feels great. I love you. I love your, your team. Damon, so real quick, uh, I was doing a cam show on Saturday night when the World Series started. Mm-hmm. And so what I did in my cam room was I was like, you guys are responsible to every five minutes update me on the score. Right. So the whole screen is like, oh, 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 because nothing had happened till the sixth inning. Wait, which one was this? Which night? Saturday night. Uh, Saturday night. Okay, so, so it was the, the win. The, no, that was Sunday night. Sunday night. It was, was the, the night the before the win. Okay. And so. Because Friday night was like the longest like game innings. of all time innings. or something. 18 crazy innings. And so here I was, I get off cam and I and it starts to get good. The game starts to get good. So I start texting Demo and I'm like, yo, I was asking my people in cam to keep me updated on the score. And he loved that. And then yeah. the, the game went back and forth a couple of times and it was exciting. And I really wanted them to win for him. Yeah. We live in LA. Yeah. We should be rooting for the Dodgers. But yeah. I like him so much. He's wonderful. You trained your staff very well. They respect you. They work hard for you and they're good people. They're really good people. I feel so fortunate to have them, and um, I'm just so incredibly grateful to them all. And, and you know, grateful to you too. And that's a thing. It's like it's kind of people don't understand. Like it's a team effort. You know, when it, it, it's funny, I actually had this conversation with a friend of mine the other day. They a girl wanted me to shoot her, and she wanted to know like what I cost. And I mentioned how much a shoot would be. And it wasn't just my rate. It was also like, this is what location and makeup and stuff. And she just was like, oh my God, that's so ridiculously expensive. I'm like, I am not a magician who just sits there and waves my fucking magic wand and like everything looks amazing. Like this is a team effort. It takes a lot of people to put these shoots together and make them look the way they do. If you want them to look great, yes. If you want to just be in a room with a couch, go for it. Yeah. You can do that all day long for 500 bucks. There's plenty of people that you can pay $500 to and you can get kind of shit photos yep. and go for it. Yep, but, but you're never going to want to blow those up into an 8 by 10 and sign them at any trade show because they're going to be awful. That's the thing. And I was just kind of like, this is what it costs to like have quality like that. You like my work. You think I'm the best. This is what it costs. And if you're going to do that and have good quality work, then that's what you're going to use for your avatar and your banners and all of your promotional materials. It is not just that day. You're going to get to ride yes. that for as long as you want. Absolutely. I, you know, I had a photographer shoot me when I did my last um, set of photos uh, for myself. And I remember she told me her rate 
And for a sec, because I honestly thought she was going to pitch me a little less. And for a second, I almost debated arguing with her about it. And then I was like, no, no, no. I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, okay, like think about what you charge. Think about how much work you put into that. Think how valuable the photos are that you produce. And I'm like, I'm going to pay her her full rate. And you know what? It was absolutely worth it. I used the fucking shit out of those photos. I use them for everything. I did that shoot like a year and a half ago, almost two years ago. And I will probably continue to use the same photos for like investment. the next five years. Good photos it are was, an investment. It was a great investment and it was worth every fucking penny. Yep. That makes all the difference in the world. You get what you pay for. You can hire those in-between filler shoots for other things. But when you want something that you're going to use on your promo to go to trade shows and your promo to go to events, you want it to look good. Yeah, exactly. All of it. Exactly. Yeah. So on that note. (laughs) We're out of here. Lisa, can you tell everyone where they can find you online? You can find me at the real Lisa Ann on Instagram and Twitter. And I'd like to let you know that if you think I'm direct messaging you right now, I'm not. And if you think I'm asking you for iTunes gift cards, that also isn't me. She also Lots, doesn't live in Ghana. Yeah. And, and don't send money to Ghana. <laughs> Lots of imposters out there. So hit me at the real Lisa Ann. You'll see I'm verified. And also you can hear me on Sirius XM, but my pet project and where you'll find so much of my work with Holly is on my website, thelisaann.com. Fantastic. And you guys can find me on uh, at Holly Randall at Instagram and Twitter and obviously my website, hollyrandall.com. Um, please go check it out. I put a lot of hard work into it and I update it several times a week. And I would love to have you as a new member and I would love for you to support my journey towards becoming more independent. And also, if you want to support this podcast, go to Holly, sorry, go to Patreon. <laughs> Fuck, man, I got so many fucking platforms. I, I got to hustle. We all, so hard. Patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. And I love you guys so much. And I'll see you all next week. 